Hi, um, my name is Ani from Duke University, and I'm very excited and happy to be here today to share with you some of my research on the means influence ability model of agency for gender leadership. And this is done together with my wonderful collaborators, Christy Colville and Ashley Rosette, who is sitting over there cheering me on. Um, um, so part of, part of the reason why I'm so excited is because uh, to our knowledge, no researcher has really tried to go in and understand, well, what is agency and what does it mean for women and minority groups who are trying to um, pursue and maintain leadership positions in organizations. So this is our MIA model, and it really seeks to answer this question of why are women missing in action, or MIA? in organizational positions. Well, there are a lot of reasons why this could be the, uh, the case for sure, but one reason is people's perceptions and reactions towards agentic women. And in our earlier work, we reviewed the uh, research on agentic biases, and we came to two conclusions. The first conclusion is that women, they're still perceived as lacking in sufficient agency or qualities such as competence, being dominant, being very ambitious, independent, they are needed for these leadership roles. And the second conclusion is that women leaders, they are penalized for being too agentic. Well, this seems a bit problematic because how can women be disadvantaged in terms of being, being seen as both lacking in and having too much agency? And what we are proposing is that this could be reconciled with a better understanding of what, uh, how agency is defined, what it contains, and what is the structure of agency. So in the past, agency has really been largely conceptualized as a unidimensional construct that's very broad and all-encompassing in scope. So it contains many different things. And what we're proposing today is that agency might be multidimensional. It might contain many different things. And this is our multi-factor means influence ability model of agency. And we're proposing that different factors within this multi-factor model might drive the two agentic and not agentic enough biases. And so here's how we develop our model. Uh, so we reviewed close to a thousand uh, gender leadership articles and we developed this 25 item measure of agency and we were able to cross-validate this uh, multi-factor model across nine different studies uh, using about 3,500 different people. And here is our MIA model of agency. So we see that women can be seen as being independent, being competent, being self-assured, being dominant, being hardworking, being ambitious. And using the six-factor model of agency, we define agency as asserting the self, through demonstrating means, influence, and ability. And so we did a lot of analysis in our paper for sure, but here's a sneak preview of what an MIA model could do in terms of reconciling the not agentic enough and the two agentic biases. So uh, in one of our studies, we asked people to think about, well, to what extent do you agree that your supervisor is competent, ambitious, so the different aspects of agency. And as our moderator, we had supervisor's gender, and as a dependent variable, we had you know, positive leader evaluations, so whether this person can be a top leader and how effective this person is. So we looked at the interactions between gender and agency such that it's possible that women, they may receive more or less positive leader evaluations depending on whether they are seen as lacking or having certain types of agency. And we had significant interactions for independent and dominant agency. So here's the pattern for independent agency. So at, high, uh, at low levels of independent agency, we see that men, which is represented by the bolded red line, they seen as better leaders than women, the dash blue line, but we don't find gender differences at high levels of independent agency. And at low levels, and for dominant agency, we find that the pattern flips, such that men are seen as much better leaders at high levels of dominant agency, uh, compared to women who are also highly dominant, but we don't uh, find any gender differences at low levels of dominant agency. And this is very consistent with what we know about gender backlash. So in terms of future directions, um, 
we're, we're currently working uh, on, we're currently, uh, we have a very rich data set of Fortune 500 leaders, and we are finding evidence that having or uh, lacking in certain types of agency has very tangible, uh, different uh, tangible organizational outcomes for women leaders. And with that, I'd like to thank you, and I welcome any questions later. Thank you.